ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out in time. And boy, these federal employees are, whoa, they're fired up, man. They are angry. Rent doesn't get furloughed, neither do mortgages. They don't care about what your situation is. You're supposed to pay. Federal workers are missing their first paychecks as the shutdown drags on. Now, Trump had a meeting with the Democrats yesterday, and he ended up abruptly walking out. So this thing continues on. Federal workers furlough or working without pay under the partial government shutdown are feeling the sting of going nearly two weeks without receiving any new money as bills start to pile up. It's stressful, says Nicole Rhodes, a resource assistant at Wayne National Forest in Nelsonville, Ohio. She was last paid on December 28th and does not know when the next paycheck is arriving. As the shutdown goes on, it's unclear how she will keep up with her bills. Rent doesn't get furloughed, she said. Yeah, I laughed when they first shut down because the Trump administration were telling them, write a letter to your landlord. Landlords don't want letters. They want money. Mortgage companies don't want letters. They want money. Okay, you got a problem with that. Maybe that's something that just works for Trump. It, it sure don't work for the rest of us. Workers trying to make rent, student loans, car, credit cards, and other payments that make up monthly bills are under severe strain as portions of the federal government remain shut down for a third week, becoming so far the second longest shutdown in U.S. history. The last paycheck most federal employees receive came around December 28th. This Friday will mark the first payday where nothing will come. The government aimed to offer a way to ease the stress over money in the form of a notice on December 27th from the Office of Personnel Management, which oversees federal workers in its guidance OPM uh, advises those who will not be paid during the shutdown to reach out to landlords, creditors, and mortgage lenders to request reduced payments. The office provided sample letters people could use to negotiate payment. One letter, which has since been removed from the guidance, originally suggests employees ask their landlord to barter maintenance service for partial payments. There, people don't do that. You can't barter your rent. What are you talking about? That's so, that's unrealistic. I guess you did remove that letter. It's stupid. Advice that invited staunch criticism on social media and worker representatives, Tony Reardon, the president of the National Treasury Employees Union, said the suggestion was laughable in an interview with CNN. And he's right. That is stupid. Nobody barters. Please tell me the name of this place where you get to barter rent. Let us all know. <laughs> I think it's disgusting. Candidly, he said it's wrong to treat human beings this way. The OMP spokesperson apologized on December 29th, saying that inadvertently released documents were out of date. The government suggests have uh, suggestions have not exactly panned out for workers. It's not going to pan out for no one. And whoever wrote that letter, you can tell that person never had any financial problems. You can tell. Andrew, uh, no, let me just go on. All right, so this is a furlough, uh, a furlough federal employee who lives in Chicago says he reached out to his landlord and asked 
to have his rent deferred until the shutdown was over to no avail. See, th these folks don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear you need to stay in this apartment without pay, without offering them any pay for X amount of months or even years, which is what Trump is suggesting. Nobody's going to allow you to do that. So, of course, I'm not shocked the landlord didn't want to hear that. Um, like many federal workers, he will not receive a paycheck this Friday when he would normally be paid. You know, contrary to what many people believe, a lot of folks live from paycheck to paycheck. That's reality in America. I'd heard that there was a statement made that landlords would work with us, said Van S a Single. Um, they said, no, they're still enforcing the terms of the contract. That's right. That's what landlords are going to tell you. You know, just because you can't eat, the landlord don't see why they can't eat. So the only thing you need to do, Van Single, is get your butt out there and look for work. That, that's the best thing for every single federal employee that's going without a paycheck. It's no point in whining about it. It's not going to change. There's no end in sight. So you're going to have to make a decision to take a job in the short term so that you can pay rent. You know, don't y'all pay play a lot of nepotism? You sure did when I was in corporate America. So since there's a lot of nepotism, you need to hook up with family members and see where they're working and if they got open positions and they can get you in there. You don't even need experience because of nepotism. Okay, but other bills don't always accept payment on credit. The 36-year-old, who is also an attorney, says he may seek out a temporary legal work, uh, though he feels the open question about when the and makes it hard for employees to make a gamble on hiring him. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do, but you better find some kind of work while you're just sitting there. Rhodes 23 echoed a similar concern while she was able to rely on family to help her through the holidays She's now considering seeking a part-time job where she lives in Athens, Ohio, to earn money during the furlough, but worries about abandoning a new job upon the government reopening. Well, that's actually not that bad. <laughs> you know, you better think about what is more important to you, keeping a temporary job or your government job where you know, once upon a time, it was believed those jobs were safe. They don't look too safe anymore. Um, I want to leave an employer behind, she said, but if it goes beyond a month, more than a month, I can't go without a paycheck. I can't. I hate saying that the shutdown has left me in the dust, but it really has. Well, apply for unemployment. At this point, you have the right to do that. You're going without a paycheck. It may not be all the money in the world, but you'll have something coming in. Rhodes said that she could not consider asking her landlord for a payment delay and that she would not want to get in the way of maintenance workers already hired to do the work that OMP suggests she bought her for it. Nobody's going to take work for rent. I don't care what any of you say, such as painting or carpentry. Well, if they got a hired maintenance staff, why would they need you to do painting or carpentry? That's stupid. Um, isn't that problematic? They don't need my help, she said. They sure don't. That's a cycle I won't want to be part of, she adds, but I'm very lucky. It's just me and my roommate. 
if you have a family or kids, I can understand if you need to do something like that. For one, the Internal Revenue Service employee in Philadelphia, the suggestion from the government is to reach out to lenders and landlords only compounded by stress of the shutdown. The government is asking employees to barter, to pay rent or creditors was extremely distressing to me because it's unrealistic, says the employee who declined to share her name. We don't even know our landlord. When we move, we had to sign a paper that states if we were a few days late with rent, they could start eviction proceedings. The employee who was recalled uh, back to work on January 7th after being furloughed when the shutdown first started on December 22nd says working without pay just makes it harder to complete tasks. Yeah, because you don't want to work. I mean, be real. You don't want to work. If you're not going to get paid, who wants to sit there and work? That's why your TSA agents are now calling out sick in high numbers. And as this thing drags on, so will the rest of these employees. It's too much in doubt. You have the federal employees on furlough, they're not getting paid. The ones that have to show up for work, they're not getting paid. And you now have a situation where if this thing drags out, even the ones that are supposed to work won't show up for work. Nobody out here is going to go along with these employees putting their lives on hold because the government is shut down. The bills are going to roll in. These people are going to fall behind. And even the back pay is really not a certain thing. You know, there are articles saying they may not get back pay at all. They may have to just return back to work. And that's going to be a problem because if you're behind on bills and you don't get that back pay, how do you get caught up? If they're going to just start you with your um, paycheck and no back pay. So, I mean, boy, these folks are really between a rock and a hard place right now. Uh, right now, it feels like indentured servitude. <laughs> the employee says, we just want the shutdown to end for employees to be paid retroactively and for some provisions to be put in place where federal employees will not have to work without a paycheck. Van Single, who has been passing his time off during the furlough, doing puzzles and volunteering, says the third week marks the first time he felt real fear over his future. Well, forget the puzzles and the volunteering. Go out there and look for work. Start filling out applications. I thought it would be over in a week or two, but I don't think I didn't think it was that serious, he said. I'm good financially until the end of next month. But then the bills come in. All these things a week ago, I wasn't concerned about, but now it's a real concern. So these folks are in a lot of trouble. They really are. And you got a president that's talking about dragging this out months, even years. These people can't go months and even years without a paycheck. That might be convenient for Trump. That's not convenient for anybody else. And the politicians aren't hurting. Most of them are milling, uh, millionaires, right? So if they're millionaires, they're not hurting. Nancy Pelosi is a millionaire. Chuck Schumer is a millionaire. Um, all of Mitch McConnell is a millionaire. I mean, these people are millionaires. They don't give a damn about these folks if they're sitting there and their lives are falling apart. 
But now, ladies and gentlemen, having a federal job is not secure at all. At any given moment, as we can see, this is the third shutdown in one year these people had to go through. But this one by far is the longest. But please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.